Hey there, and welcome back to my Tech Tip tutorial series. Today we're actually going to be working with data page. More specifically, customized Excel output. Because I get this question all the time, I wanted to make a video to explain how we do it step by step. So here is data page open. I'm in the text report tab. I've just got a simple, uh, simple report. I have 13 circles. I'm just reporting diameter on 15 transactions of that same part. So basically there's two ways to get our data into Excel. The first way is to simply dump it into a spreadsheet, this button here, to Excel. So I'm going to press that and you have a very few options. We can say where we want to put it, what it's called. So I'll just do that, click OK. And once it generates it, I'll open it to show you what it looks like. Okay, so let's open that up. So here it is here, measurement report. So there we go, it's pretty simple. It simply dumps the data. It has a few uh, default headings. So that's not what I want. So let's close that and we'll work with a customized template. So the trick to doing this is to doing all of the work in Excel. Uh, the data page side of it is actually quite easy. Okay, so let's open up my template, the one I've made ahead of time. Just find that. So I've called it my custom template. So it took a bit of time to make this. So the trick here I found, because I've done this a few times, is to make a worksheet detailing what information you want in which cell or range of cells. So that's the trick. So you can see all my blank spaces here. So the blank space here beside the title measurement report will be the part name. So that is cell. So let's click on that and you can see that's D2. So for my worksheet I need to put the part name into D2 and the same with all the other ones. So for example all of these rows here. So feature ID will be the feature name and data page and then we have nominal upper tolerance lower tolerance so the trick to all of this like I said before is to know where we want to put our data and what it's called in data page so take the time to make a, a worksheet detailing all those cell identification numbers I've also applied formatting to my template uh, some shading some different colors a logo and what I've done in these cells here this is where the measured data will go. I've actually applied conditional formatting, so the text will appear red if that's out of tolerance. So it's a bit of work, but I've done that ahead of time. Uh, but once it's done, you simply dump the data, it's formatted, and it looks great. Okay, let's get started. So here's our button, Customize Excel Output. Give that a click. So the first thing we need to do is load our template. So we remember we've called that my custom template so we'll give that a click populates that box next is we want to determine our output so this is basically what I'll call this so I'll just call it inspection report and put it in that same folder and save okay so we're all set we know what template we're using and we know where our report will be saved okay back to our worksheet there's our part name. So now we just tell data page where we want to put that. So from our worksheet that is column D, row two. And we'll apply that to the right. And we'll just keep working down our list. So part number on my worksheet is actually the transaction index in data page. So every time we run a part, it indexes it 1, 2, all the way up to 15. Okay, so let's just enter that. So from my worksheet, we're working with A7 to A21. So you can see in the count there, it's giving us 15, so we know it's correct. 15 transactions. So we'll apply that to the right. And down the list, transaction date. So this is actually the time in our Excel spreadsheet. It just depends how we have that formatted. Okay, so transaction date, we'll apply that to the right, and that will go in the 
B7 to B21 rows. Okay, next is feature name. That's way up here at the top. There it is there. So this time we're at column C. C3 to O3. So it's always the same row. The column is just changing. Okay, so 13 counts, that looks good. Next we have nominal. So we're just changing the row number. So we're just going down our Excel spreadsheet. C and O remain the same. We're just going to row four. Same with uh, upper tolerance, that's row five. So we're still working with C and O. We'll apply that. Lower tolerance, row six. Almost done. And last and most important is our measured data. So that's up here at the top. So measured value. And from our worksheet, we know that C7, that's, this is the grid, C7 to O21. So you can see we have 13 columns, 15 rows, exactly what we want. We'll apply that to the right, and we're done. So before we click OK to dump the data, what we want to do in this case is save it. So when we save it, it saves our template, which can be reloaded at a later time. So I'll go through that later. So it saves it as an XML file. Um, let's just give it a name. My saved template. So we can just give it a name, save it, and it saves it as an XML file. And I'll show you later how we can recall that. So now that we've saved it, we can just click OK. And if we open our folder, we should find our inspection report right there. So let's give it a click and see if it worked. OK, it looks like I've made a mistake in the part number. All right, so let's, I can actually fix that since I've saved my template. Okay, let's go back to data page and I'll fix that. So here's where the load function comes in handy. So let's go to load. And there's my save template. So you can see all our values are remembered. So let's see what I did wrong here. Ah, it looks like I've done transaction date twice so this is the problem here so I'm going to remove that and go back down and fix that so that should be transaction index now, columns and rows are correct but the, the variable was wrong okay so actually that's not too bad so we can just fix that and I'll just rename this to inspection report 2 um, and here I, I want to save this again my new saved template. I think later I'll just go and delete that other one. So let's save that and click OK and see if that worked. So let's open inspection report 2. There we go. So here's my correction. Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, you can see the value of saving our templates there in the XML files. So my formatting is applied. I have red showing what's out of tolerance. My feature IDs are filled in, uh, nominal, upper, lower tolerance, and the timestamp. So there you go. So there's lots of flexibility with this. Um, I just wanted to show you a simple example. Well, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Hey, so while I've still got your attention, I just wanted to take a moment to promote our e-learning training program. If you like my tech tips, then you may want to check out our series of instructional e-learning videos. Our CMM e-learning courses are internet-based and cover the complete PCDMS training courses from start to finish. This will be the same material covered in our classroom training, with the added convenience of allowing you to view them whenever and wherever you want. For more information, please visit the training section of our website.